Um, now I wanted to ask you a little bit about Loud Records. Like you said, they just had the um the performance recently. Like Loud was like a, a heavily Powerhouse. star-studded label. Like, did you like? Because you know, back then people was in the studios and working together. Did you really see all of these people? You know, coming in and not allowed. Pa- powerhouse, man. You, you gotta you gotta look at it like <clears throat> some of our our first opportunities is loud records. Like that's our first opportunity. Like, when, when, by the time we started to get, when, once once my cousin got the internship there, he's, you know, we we started to put together these beat tapes. We used to call them bash music. So the, loud had loud always had a listening room like. That's where everybody kind of congregated. You know, they would smoke there, whatever, let's listen to the room. All the artists would come through and they would always either play the new music that was coming out or that's what, you know, producers would come through, pay their music. So we used to create our music and then people used to come to the office. So that may either be Ray, Pun. They would come to the office and that's when my cousin would play, you know, what we was working on. So on one particular one, Pun heard something that he liked. Right. So he heard something that he, that's, that's, we, that's what we call the now capital punishment. He heard the record, heard the beat, and was like, yo, I need that. He kept telling me that we needed it. He kept telling me that I need, he needed that. So um, Fat Joe set up the session. They used to they used to work out of a studio in Staten Island called Mystic. And then I used to have to take the ferry and <laughs> go all the way over there. We tried to lay the beat down a few times. And then some of the times it didn't work out because of the, the, the floppy disk got corrupted. It was just so much weird thing. We kind of laid that beat for pun almost three different times before it actually came through. But the whole loud records thing was to answer your question, but the whole loud record thing was like surreal because you don't know who you would see. I go there one day, I might see, I might see prodigy P rock. You might see, you don't know who you're going to see, you know? And then as we started to um, produce more after we did the pawn stuff, um, that's when Ray Kwan started to kind of, you know, kind of started to call us and was like, yo, I wanted to work on this, on that second album. And the Mobilarity album, and at that point, that's when he taught us. He took us on the road, and I, I we went to I went to Atlanta. First time I came to Atlanta was with Raekwon. First time I went to the West Coast, I was with Raekwon. Spent times out with them, months at a time when he had the American Cream team going. We was out there building the records, building the records, and then based off of the Mobilarity album, we actually wind up getting a production deal with Loud Records. So we became in-house producers with Loud Records at the time. After that. So we actually wound up getting our producer deal from that um, from that album. It was like it, it happened in a weird kind of way. It was like we, we had the listening session for Mobilarity and 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 Steve and Rich. They loved the album the way it was constructed at the time. They took us into the bathroom of the Hit Factory and said, "Hey, what you guys want?" It was like, "Yeah, we want a production deal." It was like, "I got got it, put it together," and that's how it happened. But. Yeah, it's loud. Was loud was that place, man? MOP, um, three six mafia. You know, it was just that was that was our you know Def Jam on one side, and he was on loud, and it was like it was just crazy at those times. Right, right. Loud was deep, man. One of my favorite labels for sure. A lot of people's 